Hi, good day. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining us here on Happy. <laughs> I forgot the name of my own podcast on Finding Happy Podcast. I am Satin Brownie, and um, today we're going to be talking about unearthing your potential. What do we mean by that? Uh, have you ever given thought to how often you call other people's names? how often you refer to other people or how much attention you pay to what is important to other people, who they are, what they do, what they like, what they dislike. And even, for example, your mom, your dad, the person you're in love with, how much attention do you pay to those persons and how, how much effort you put into understanding them, understanding their likes, their dislikes, what they want of you, what they need of you, and, and so forth and so on. Um, do you do that with yourself? Do we do that for ourselves? So unearthing your potential is about connecting with who you are, connecting with the inner you, knowing your own name beyond writing it down or introducing yourself. If you really think about it, right? Most times we mention our own name is because we're either filling out a form, we're writing it down, or introducing ourselves. Interesting, right? But we need to get to, to invest more time into under, understanding who we are, what we like to do, who, who are, where we're at in our lives, what is it that we want from our life, connecting with the inner, deeper you. So we call it unearthing potential. Your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of yourself. Your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of yourself. In my book, Finding Happy, Avoid Mistakes, Pitfalls, and Career Suicide, I speak about discovering your true calling, your values, and your motivators. In that book, I speak about unearthing who you are, understanding what are my values, what are the things that I like, and, and, and most importantly, what motivates me, what truly motivates me. We are so bombarded with external influences and forces. We go to church, we go to school, there's so much information coming at us. And so sometimes we forget to tap into ourselves, tap into who you are, understanding who you are, what are you outside of everything external? Who are you outside of your education, besides the work that you do, besides your family life? Who are you? Who are you intrinsically? What do you personally value outside of all the external influences on your value system? This is about, unearthing your potential is about learning you, discovering you, knowing you connecting with that and leading your life knowing who you are first you should know who you are before you go to school you should know who you are before you choose a job you should know who you are even before you decide which church you join you've got to know who you personally are this will help you not get lost in the crowd I think a lot of the times persons become frustrated by, by quote unquote the system. For example, you go to church or for, for example, you may hear a person say church is this or church is that, school is this or school is that. I personally believe that that happens as a result of us getting involved into external um, institutions or value systems without first understanding what our own values are. So when we get involved in the larger society, it's almost as though we get lost because we don't know how to differentiate who we are and separate that from everything else that we're learning in our environment. So it is very critical for you to know who am I, what is important to me, what matters to me, so that you can then be clear and be, be instinctive and um, intentional when you, when you make certain decisions and choices and affiliations, right? So you can lead with yourself and not just adopt someone else's belief and ideologies because they say so. But you're able to choose what ideologies you, you, you tolerate or you ad adapt based first of your knowledge of who you are and what works for you, all right?
Today we're going to be talking to a very special lady. She is an international recording gospel artist. She is also a, she's just a phenomenal woman. She is um, a minister of, gos of the gospel. She is um, a businesswoman, an entrepreneur. She is a musician. She is talented, creative. She's a youth leader. She's an empowered woman. And she is somebody that I believe you can learn something from. We can all learn something from her and from each other. And so today we're going to be speaking with Marsha J. We are going to be speaking with her about finding happy and whether she has found it or not. And also how that influenced her job, her career choice and also her life. So she's going to be sharing a bit of her experiences with us and her thoughts. And I just ask that you welcome her and you give her an ear. And when you're done, if you want to send some feedback, ask her a question or anything, just drop it in the comment section and we will respond to you. So thank you so much again for joining the show and let's go to Marsha J. Holy, holy, holy. Jay, welcome to Finding Happy podcast. Finding Happy is really about um, exploring individual um, peace of mind, contentment, happiness, joy, and um, overall enjoyment of a meaningful life. So today we have Marsha Jay with us and she will tell us all about what she does and what her objectives are. And then we're going to have a conversation, just a, just a relaxed chat about happiness, what it means to her, um, has she found it, is she looking for it, and, and what it means, what, all, all of that, that good stuff. We're going to be having that conversation. So welcome, Marsha, to the program, and we're just going to dive right in. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great, actually. Hello, world. <laughs> Thanks for having me on your program today. Yes, and we're so happy to have you. So thank you for saying yes, and thank you for showing up, and thank you for being here to share your philosophies and ideologies with us. Right? You're welcome. You're very uh, welcome. So I'm going to allow you to tell us exactly what do you do. Okay, so as you have heard already, my name is Marsha J, and I am a businesswoman. I'm a recording artist, international recording artist. I am a philanthropist. And I enjoy so many things, but in terms of my focal point, um, organize and implementing uplifting and wholesome entertainment for public consumption. I empower millennials to increase self-confidence and to influence their choices for better life outcomes. I foster strong, healthy, and faith-based relationships among kings and queens from the kingdom and contribute to international development through charitable outreach with key stakeholders. So that's pretty much a summary of, you know, who I am, what I do. I have three brands within my company. There is the MJM brand, that's the music aspect of what I do. There is Royal Queen Collection that has to do with, um, products and services for at this point female clients and then there's royal events where we go ahead and we make any event possible with minimum to no flaws and just make your whole experience a very good one so you can enjoy what it is that you desire wow girl power Sh she thank you yes she's <laughs> definitely a ceo so that sounds fantastic. And what I like about that, what you just said is you're not just 
singing songs, but you have you have clear developmental objectives like empowering people, fostering development of relationships, and things like that. So that that is amazing. That is that is so amazing. That is very amazing. Um, how does your work um, impact on your overall state of well-being? Can I start by saying that I think everyone should be doing what really makes them happy? Because when you do what makes you happy, what happens is that it really doesn't feel like work. You actually go the extra mile, you spend the extra hours. For me, it just, it, what, I, what I do does just that. You know, whenever I take on a project, whether it's a musical project or just supplying goods and services, to the population, it feels, it makes me feel, um, there's a word I'm looking for and I can't find it, but I promise you I'll find it. <laughs> but it yeah, it makes me feel, full, feel fulfilled and I'm, I'm really happy about what I'm doing at so this you point. Love, you love what you do. Yes, I love what I do. How did you get to that stage? Was it, was it always like this where you, you knew Ever since you were young, like, this is what I want to do. How did you get to this place? How I got to this place? Well, for me personally, I, you know, as a child, you will always have dreams. You know, as a child, you probably, your dream was probably influenced by maybe circumstances around you. Uh, watching television or just being among your peers, seeing somebody and saying, okay, one day I would like to be like that. However, wishing it and it manifesting for me was very two very different things. Mm -hmm. Growing up, going to school, um, you have to understand too that what your parents give you the best of what they have and they try to influence your decisions based on what they think is best for you at the time. So I was always told um, get your education, get your education, put that first. Um, and so it led on to trying to get your education in a path that made money. But for me, that path was um, uncomfortable. I studied media and communication which is great because you need a degree. I ended up in banking. Needless to say, I found banking very monotonous and I was very unhappy. And I actually forgot about what my dreams were because I was so focused on maybe trying to get a 401k, starting out retirement early, um, having savings, being helpful to my parents and showing gratitude, which is very important because you're looking at maybe what you studied, either the door is not opening or if the door does open, it's not satisfying financially. And it caused a level of frustration for me. Um, I have had many, many points in my life where I have realized that something needs to happen. Wow. In terms of working in corporate Jamaica, I remember they were having a devotion one morning and they asked me to sing. So after they asked me to sing, after the devotion, they were like, what in the world are you doing in the background? <laughs> Aside from the fact that you have a degree that has nothing to do with business. <laughs> yes. Your voice has like, but I'm like, you know, my parents mm -hmm. see singing as a hobby. It's something that you do as a side job. It's not something that you can actually be fully successful as maybe a Beyonce or a Jay-Z or something yeah. like that. You know, they just never really saw it that way. Um, I actually wanted to go to music school at one point and they told me no. I said, go get your degree in something that is useful. And then when you start working, you can send yourself to music school. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, that kind of, they were being practical, I guess, they were, if you call it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they were being very practical, and I respected that, and I did it, and I am grateful for that, actually. Yeah. So in my own journey, um, I'm just talking about moving from corporate to where yeah, I am yeah. now. The, the bank that I was with at the time, they had their very first 
um, national talent competition. So my manager comes up to me and says, Marsha, this is like nothing. I know you can do this. Mm -hmm. So after work every evening, I would be there practicing with the musicians and so on. Sometimes it's just me and the manager in the building and he'd be working because we're like on the upstairs loft and his window, I can see from the balcony of the upstairs. And he would stop and he'd be like, what in the world? But I still never, I still never took it seriously. Entered the competition, won, I won it. And, you know, I'm grateful for that experience. But then a series of events started to happen mm -hmm. that catapulted a shift that I needed to make. So I, in a sense, thought the shift meant that I needed to go back into media because media is my first love. It really, really is. And so I resigned my job and went to a media, a first small media house, and I never stayed there very long. And I started to get confused because I was like, okay, so I have a destiny and I'm trying to find it and I'm trying to find my place. I'm trying to find a balance, not just a financial balance, but I want to be happy holistically. Right. Spiritually, right. physically, financially, every alley. So when that job fell through, I was disappointed. Again, I had to come back to St. Anne. I moved to um, the city, Kingston, come back to St. Anne, and I went through a series of small jobs. And I was like, okay, a faith-based person, I'm like, okay, God, what now? Where do I go? What do I do? Hmm. And a friend of mine, she bought a plane ticket for me and she said, you know what? I feel your feel your frustration come up. So I went to the United States and I visited, visited a church, um, her church. And apparently there was a music director that was assigned to the church and he had a studio and all of that. So whenever I go up subsequently, I would do, be doing supporting vocalist work for other artists. I still wasn't seeing the big picture because I'm saying to myself, alignment. Yeah, I wasn't seeing the big picture because I was yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm earning a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. outside of the part-time jobs in Jamaica when I travel, I earn a little hundred dollars doing background vocals for people and so on. And it's almost as if looking back at it now, God was saying, but I have so much more for you. You're picking up the crumbs. I want you to have your own food. So after a while of doing that, the company approached me and said, we think that you should do an album. I'm like, how much is it to do an album? I was worried about the how at the time. Yeah. And they're like, you know, like three, four thousand US and so on. I was like, huh? <laughs> it's not even real, you know? Uh -huh. And they're like, well, don't worry about it. We want to sign you. I'm like, me? wow. Still not getting the big picture. Me? Why? You know, because when, when you do supporting vocalists for other artists that in your mind at the time, in my mind at the time, I'm thinking, whoa, these vocals are like, of the chain, you know, yeah. when am I going to get to that level? So I, I, I accepted it and we started working. So we, they, they booked a flight for me for an entire month. And I, I was in the studio for an entire month wow. and I worked so hard and I have much respect to all the musical artists out here as much <laughs> New because fun. I have no idea. Cause remember, you know, I don't have any professional music background. I just have a gift, a talent, mm -hmm. and I just surrender it. You understand? But then when you have to be writing music, changing lyrics, changing beats, going off beat, learning languages, and singing wow. it on beat, and it was just crazy. Like six in the morning to sometimes one, two o'clock in the morning with one break in between for 30 days. That's a lot of pressure for anybody to undergo. Wow. It really is. So they said, what you gonna do when you go back to Jamaica? I said, well, there is a national competition that I've entered before. I've never really been successful at it, but I can give it one more shot because now I'm thinking, maybe I could really do this music thing. And so I came back to Jamaica, entered JCDC, which is one of the biggest competitions, national competitions in Jamaica. And when I made it past semifinals this time, I was like, is this real? And I was so, I was, I don't know how to express how I felt. But, you know, going on the journey itself, it gave you a taste of what it feels, of what stardom kind of feels like. You know, at one point, I was happy. Another point, I wasn't. They had a reality series. 
I was talking in the camera and crying and saying, listen, I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. I didn't know reality TV was like this. I don't want y'all to be up in my face. I don't want this music thing. Only can take it and go on. A lot of work. And but many opportunities came with it. We were on tour with Kevin Downs, well, and all of that, and the national publicity and all of that. So up to the up to the finals, I had been sent home three to four times. Wow! Uh, because I was under so much stress, I couldn't concentrate. And when I opened my mouth to sing, my voice just wasn't staying. And they'll be like, you know what? Because I travel all the way from Ochi to Kingston almost every week or every day to record and to rehearse and to do stuff. So when they tell you, you come to Kingston for nothing, just pack up your stuff and go home, you don't really feel encouraged and you question your destiny. You question what it is that makes you really happy because singing makes you happy. But then with the whole process that surrounds it, that was it. So the night of the finals, they were calling up sectional prizes. So I'm there racking up like six out of the eight sectional prizes. But wow. in my heart, thank you. But in my heart, I'm like, okay, I'm about to congratulate the person that is about to win. You know, so I'm getting ready to clap for them. <laughs> and, you know, just to yes. be supportive, you know? Yes. And then I heard my name. I was like, whoa. Wow. I did not realize I had won. And that is so, it's so weird that even when you win, you don't realize it. That's, that's yeah. a whole other show by itself. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> and then after that, it just everything for me just kind of changed and my perspective started to change and then I started to understand the door that was open and the weight that came with it but it wasn't a bad way to make me unhappy it was good because now I had persons calling me younger artists asking for mentorship and help and all of these things and I saw it as an opportunity to serve and that in itself makes me happy to serve so my journey actually I would say start my happy finding my happy kind of started there and then I, I met up with a good friend and she was like after a year how do I hear from you and so on I'd love to manage you I'm like me you know so it was it was a, it was a good collision of time mm -hmm. and space and everything that happened and then I want to quickly refer to a story in the Bible about the talent and about the person that had the one talent or two talent and invested in it. And then at the end, they gained more from it. And like the one that had the one and buried it and told the master, listen, I know you're a hard man. I had the one talent and I didn't want to lose it, so I buried it. I decided I wasn't going to bury anything. I was going to explore whatever there was. I find that the singing turned it out into several brands. For I know, because at the top of the interview, you said yes. Of the conversation, yeah. you, you mentioned your brand. Awesome. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, I, and, and getting coaching from my coach and advice from my manager, I started to see endless possibilities. She calls it a wow. quantum shift. <laughs> and I am so happy for my quantum shift because of the, my change in perspective. And you would think that growing up in church and all of that, it, it there is just revelation just continues to hit you when just when you think that you know enough or you know everything there is to know then boom the creator just just does something and you're like yes yeah <laughs> you know and that yeah. is where i am now you wow. know just being happy building serving and finding my happy Ah, oh, wow. Well, it sounds to me like what you've achieved is connecting your authentic vocation, which is your true calling, with, yes. with the work or with your career, with your vocation, right? Yes. And, and that is how you live. You live and not work a day in your life, right? Because exactly. when you're doing what you love, yeah. And, and from that, you get the happiness, you're saying. Exactly. Wow. One way to say, do it for the love, you know, do it for the life. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you know, in, it was so interesting when you said, um, you said, happy holistically. What does that mean for you? When you went to be happy holistically, what do you mean? What does that mean? For, for me to be happy holistically is, is just body, soul, and spirit. It's that unison. Mm -hmm. It's that oneness, you know, because you can be happy physically. I can be happy with being plus size and then emotionally 
I'm not happy because maybe I don't have a relationship that I want, or I'm not happy at the place I am at now, which would maybe mean that I'm not understanding that where I am now is exactly where I need to be. So in order for us to really and truly find our happy, we have to be at one with ourselves. Wow. Understand where we are. We know where we want to go, you know. But understanding where we are and the fact that it's just one, it's one day at a time, one foot in front of the other, and where we are is exactly where we're supposed to be. It's just a matter of up here and just staying focused and knowing what we really want and continuously working towards it. Mm -hmm. And when you, make, when you speak to up here, you're speaking to the mind or the brain or? Yes, I'm just speaking. Just for those who will be listening and not seeing you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> but That's yes, okay. I'm, I'm speaking of the mind. Right, of the, of right. The thought process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you go there, so we, on, on Finding Happy, on our Finding Happy podcast, we have three elements that we, well, I use or connect. There's also other school of thoughts out there that speaks to this as well. Thoughts, feelings, and actions, Right. And mm -hmm. our, our conversation is for you to really achieve happiness, these three has to be, have to be har in harmony. Um, so what it is, is thoughts is what you create, feelings, the meanings you give to what you've created, and the actions are the habits you develop based on the meanings and the beliefs that you yeah. have. What are your thoughts on that? I completely agree with you because there's so much power in your thought life. Mm -hmm. You are what you think. That's yes. how they say you are what you eat, you are what you think. And it's important of your mind, it's important that you mind your mind diet. Wow. You mind, mind, your mind. mind your hold on. Mind. mind or mind? Am I am I <laughs> am I mind. any as in gold mining? Yes. Ah, I like that. Mind yeah. your mind. Yes. Wow. Exactly. That's, that's, I think that's powerful. I love it. Yes. Yes. I love it. And um, scientists, statistics tell us, and scientists tell us that we only use like a third of our brain. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we recognize how powerful we are as human beings. Mm -hmm. God created us with such a capacity. Yes. We are made in the image and likeness of him. But it's just that we have not tapped into it. Right. To its fullest potential. Right. right? But um, we have to go seeking. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. And that is what it is. Knowledge is all around us. Knowledge is also within us. Revelation, you know, we just didn't think about a certain thing from a certain perspective. So it is important for us to find um, that balance in terms of looking at what, where we are at now, am I a negative thinking person? And if right. I am, how do I get from A to B or from C to Z? Because there is a word that I learned in corporate Jamaica. It's called Kaizen. And it means constant improvement of self. And I, wow. that word has never left me. It has never left me. And I just said to myself, as a, as a young person, as a millennial, I want to constantly improve. There has to be more to life than this. But then I had to start with my mind. Right. So I started to brainstorm and think and think and think. And then now you have your, your actions that has to be in alignment with. Because right. I can think I'm a superstar, but I'm not doing anything towards it. So that idea just stays in my head. Right. So now you move from thought to maybe paper. You write it down and say, okay, how am I going to become this person? What will it take for me? To move from here to here mm -hmm. and so with all of that you start writing down you start doing your research and so on and so forth and then no we put into action mm -hmm. what can mm -hmm. i do one thing every day my little brother said the one thing every day that takes you closer to your goal and he's such a role model for me my little brother because he's like a go-getter like real you know so for me it all makes sense what you are saying you can't sit down and make it happen. Faith without works is dead. It really is. But then you're only limited by your own mind as well. Because right. something that, that, that my happy is allowing me to accomplish now. I never saw myself achieving it. But I had to, I had to change my mindset. I had to rearrange my thoughts. Wow. And only focus on the things 
that were really conducive to me finding my happy. Yes, yes. What does happiness mean to you? Happiness means contentment. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that everything is perfect, but it means that I understand my atmosphere. I understand my atmosphere, I understand what is happening. So whether it's negative or positive, I'm still happy because for me, the, the, the end result is that I am always going to be where I need to be. I'm always going to be learning what I need to learn from this situation and in this moment. So because something is negative, it doesn't mean you're not happy. It doesn't. But you are, you are secure enough and comfortable to understand that you are on the right path to where you need to be. Wow. Well said. Well said. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, how happy would you say you are today? <laughs> <I'm a 10. laughs> say that again. I'm a, I'm a 10. Awesome. <laughs> I'm a 10. I am, I'm so happy being my own boss as opposed to working for somebody else. Mine is holding me for work. <laughs> but <laughs> you're doing what well you know i am i am at peace my my body is also in alignment with my decision of being my own boss because your body talks to you and then when i realized while working in corporate jamaica how high strung i was stressed here falling out and all these things having um anxiety attacks from time to time since being my own boss and following the path um, my personal path uh, I realized that I don't have those symptoms. So even my body is saying, girl, yes, this is it. Yes. It's thanking you. <laughs> That's wonderful. If we, I would like to invite you to just go back in time for me and tell me, tell me an, a time or if you could connect it with an incident or just a period in time or or whatever when you were you felt like this is the happiest i've ever been hmm yes there are many moments like that okay yes. let me think about Wonderful. One. tell us the top one the top one yes would be when i won jcdc because as a child i have never been great at anything I was never a top student. I didn't consider myself brilliant. I was always the child that when your parents come for a report, the teacher keeps saying, you know, and she has so much potential but I'm just not getting <laughs> potential. Why she's not manifesting? Wow. You know, and I used to be tired of hearing it from primary school to high school and just feeling like a failure. You know, I mean, the one thing that God gave me that spoke volumes was my voice. But I just didn't know how to leverage it mm -hmm. and to use it to, to, to walk in alignment with my destiny. So that national competition and, 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 and just looking back on all the struggles I went through, I entered the competition three, four times before never got anywhere for various reasons, spending money, losing money, um, just going through a lot, an emotional roller coaster, and still having the courage to try again. Yes. Wow. And yes. topped it. That and is what we call, yeah. That is what in coaching we call failing forward. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And I didn't even realize I was failing forward, but I just felt like the timing was right and I needed to yes. do it again. I needed to go again. Yeah, I don't know where the motivation came from because I was highly depressed. I was diagnosed with a lot of emotional issues when I spoke with the relevant persons. And so, you know how when people win, they were jumping up and down and screaming? Yes. But I, I didn't. Wow. I just didn't. I just stood there crying and I, and I wasn't, I wasn't even crying because I won. What was going through your mind? I was saying, really, all of this journey, I'm thinking about the bad days, the good days and everything. And I'm like, I, was I really favored with this national recognition from not being recognized any at all and failing to a national recognition, international recognition? 
Because yes. people brought in for me from Africa and Caribbean islands and all wow. that. They have never met me. Powerful. It was her that we going with this girl. Awesome. You know? Awesome. So I was like, wow, God, this is, this is, what's inside has got to be greater than what I was already manifesting. And I needed to hone that. I needed to. So it made, it made me, it, it was a highlight for me. It really did make me happy. Congratulations on that win. That's fantastic. If, well, in your talks with young person, or if you were to, if you were able to speak to your, say, um, 15 year old self now about being happy and enjoying the journey, what would your message be to her? Just that, enjoy the journey, never turn down an opportunity, um, bask in the moment. It's not as serious as it seems. Wow. Um, take care of yourself first. I would tell her that. And don't change your heart for people. You, things will happen, but don't change your heart for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will. Wow. Thank you for that. What would you say to someone that says, how can I be happy when I'm so poor? I'm in such poverty. So much is going wrong for me. So many people are against me. Things are not happening for me. How can I be happy when I'm rich or when I'm comfortable or when, when the things that I want to fall in place have fallen in place, then I can think about being happy or that's when I'll be happy. What do you say to such a person? Wow. I would say to that person, time does a lot. What is it that you need to be learning? Because life is a series of learning curves to get to where we need to go. I can only answer this question too from a faith-based perspective. No problem. I believe that the higher power that I trust in has a plan for my life. It might not be visible right away, but every single action that we take takes us closer to a destiny that was designed for us. However, we also were given the power of choice according to Genesis chapter one. Adam and Eve was given a choice to either stay away from the fruit or have it. And there are certain things that we need to do to get to where we're going. Mark here, some of these things are not easy, but they make us and prepare us for where we need to go. But in the meantime, I would say stay focused. Stay focused. Learn the lessons and only change what you need to. It's not everything about us that we need to change when we go through something. There are elements of us that keeps us alive and sometimes life will work against it to make us go the opposite way. And in doing that, sometimes we lose our authentic self. Be your authentic self, but make the changes that you need to. And lastly, I would say, be patient with the process. Patience is not an easy thing for us to learn. I'm still learning it. Because you see, you might see the end or you have a desired end, but you're like, when? And why is it that I have all of these hurdles on my way to my expected end? But it is in your brokenness that you will find your greatness. And that's a quote from my coach. <laughs> you understand? So what I have found is that without my testimony, without a test, you don't get a testimony. And with that testimony, it gives you influence. Because there's no way you can come and talk to me about me being suicidal and you don't know how depression feels. It's easy for me to identify with you if you have been there and it makes you impactful. And that is why ultimately we need to understand what our real purpose on earth is. Is it really to have that house and car and so on? 
or to leave a mark and to impact people. It's funny that you said that. It's funny that you said that because my next question for you was going to be, if you were to choose between the perfect socioeconomic status in life and being and choosing what makes you happy, even if that means living in poverty, which would you choose? But that, I think you probably answered that question. <laughs> and th let me say why I asked this question. I know they have this book, the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, and I'm someone who grew up um, extremely poor. I don't even know if I'm at the stage where I can say I'm no longer poor. <laughs> If I really were to go by the societal definitions of what poverty is, I, do, I am not poor because I'm a, I'm, I'm, I have a wealth of, of opportunities and people and value and, and, and just blessings. I feel just, uh, I feel just blessed. I, I feel like the luckiest girl, you know? Um, but I ask it because a lot of persons, especially those who are poor, sometimes fall into the sad category only because they are quote unquote poor. And I've had, I'm a career coach and a life coach, so I've had clients who are quite a number of clients. And before this, I, I have done counseling too, right? And quite a bit of persons conclude that they're unhappy because of their socioeconomic status. They conclude that I'm unhappy because I'm poor, I'm unhappy because I'm hungry, I'm unhappy because I don't have, I'm unhappy because, because, because. So do you believe that um, one's socioeconomic status plays any role at all in their, ha in their capacity or the ability for them to be happy? You have a point, it does. There is a, in, in studying counseling and psychology in school, there's a chart that we looked at called Maslow's Hierarchy of okay. Needs. Right, and at the bottom of the chart, it states our basic needs as human beings. Food, clothing, shelter, affection, and then it goes up to where a person can actually actualize, actualize what it is that they, and, also in that research, it shows that very few people in life have actually actualized or gotten to a point where they were happy. We have like Mother Teresa was stated, the Dalai Lama was also stated, and Jesus was also stated as one of those persons that actually actualized. So, but as, as, as human beings, we do need these things and we cannot be blindsided to that fact right so and then we have to ask ourselves what is poor <laughs> the word poor is relative because i, I can build a mansion and i am i am poor mm -hmm. you understand but what kind of poor really are we referring to because i my grandmother lived in a one bedroom hut she had 21 children and happier than her you couldn't find she was just happy about the fact that she had her children around her. Her husband worked the land and farmed, and they had enough for, the, for each day. And she wasn't worried about certain things, even though it was a lot of mouths to feed, and it's a one bedroom and all the kids were on the floor. Right? So it's a matter of perspective, again, how you see it. Are you looking at the glass, half full or half empty? And then also, we are in charge of our destinies too, in terms of creating certain paths for ourselves. Yes. Right? Yes. And I, I really do believe that we pull certain energies to us. I've experienced it so many times. So you can be, let's say, economically, you're poor. And, but every day you get up, you're just grateful. They're just grateful and you're ex I mean you, you grow up your children and, and you're poor and the children don't even realize that they were poor until maybe when they grow up and become a bit more successful because you did what you need to poor to, to sorry to get to a place where you're no longer in that status. 
Right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you have a mindset and a certain energy about you, where you are, you tend to pull the things that you need. Right. I would think that a madman or a homeless person, is, they're pretty much hungry most times. But then a stranger might walk up and say, see a food here. They never asked for it, you know. But they were hungry. And that need pulls somebody to assist them too. So sometimes it's not even a direct, a direct ask for something. But sometimes, and that is why I think too, we need to be very observant. As people, you walk past somebody every day, you just don't know. You don't know what a smile will do. You don't know what a hello will do. You don't know if you have a five hundred dollar drop in them hand. You might just save them life. You might just need five hundred dollars to buy a pill. That will save your lives. Right. And and so, don't you think that? Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Don't you think also that um, as you as based on what you just said, even for example that. My, a mentally ill person or a mad person who's on the street who someone just walked up and gave them food um the person might be drawn by the fact that they can see that this person is hungry but don't mm -hmm. you think it's also dependent on how welcomed the person who is offering help feel so for example don't you think that person who they're seeking to help plays play a role in either um, in, in influencing people to come to help them. So for example, for me personally, if I'm walking down the road and I see somebody look very serious, um, like miserable, I'm a mm -hmm. mad person, I am not inclined to stop. Yes. But if I see one looking happy and chirpy, or even if they're not internally, but they look pleasant and welcoming, I might be more inclined to take the yes. chance, to take the risk to go over because you don't know if it's, if it's going to be safe when you go. Because again, they didn't really verbally say, help me in all cases. Sometimes yeah. they do, sometimes they don't, right? Um, don't you think that their appearance of happiness or some level of joy or pleasantness from them impact whether or not or influence whether or not someone feels moved or compelled to risk whatever potential collision they could face to come help them it does you know it really really does but then there's also the flip side to it where um for for us as as sensitive people if persons believe in that sometimes your heart is just pulled towards something that you don't even ask someone and you don't even understand why. And you just have this feeling that I need to go over there and say something. And sometimes people don't take the time to process what is it that they're feeling that would cause them to respond outside of a facial feature of somebody or so. Because I have had those moments where um, I just see persons, they don't look anyway, neither happy nor sad. And I just felt like going over to them and just encouraging them on the street. What because made you feel safe to go? What made you feel safe to go? What made me feel safe? Like it was safe. Uh, yes, you had the instinct. Uh, yes, you were going to go. But what is it that made you feel, you know what? I don't have to be afraid. I can just go. This, this person is not going to potentially hurt me. Or, or I can take this risk. And it's the okay. truth is that you really don't know. You know. But then as a faith-based person, this is something that I've always practice and for me it's having my spiritual ears open to listen to instructions from god and i i don't think the adversary would tell you to do something helpful so even if i i get an instruction and that's how i that's how i understand it i get an instruction to do something i move at it i have seen where i have not moved at it and it has caused serious ripple effects mm -hmm. so it's almost as if you you, you, just, you just have to always be aware of certain things. It doesn't happen all the time. Because I'll tell person stuff and they're like, oh, you're not telling me so and so and so. But I have to move based on instruction that I am given. And that, right. that's just obedience. Understood. Just obedience. Understood. My last question for you. Last question. Um, and I'll just share a little bit about my own experiences and why I ask you this. For me, for a long time, before I found what happy was for me, for a long time, I felt almost as though even when I was achieving things, I felt like 
I was in an environment that I had to downplay my joy, mm -hmm. especially as an entrepreneur. I felt like I had to don't play my joy, don't play my peace, don't play my happiness, and almost deliberately ensure that I am lamenting or I am working to 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 vision, to let people to to manifest my my needs so you can see it on me. And I was doing that almost as though if I didn't do that, then Persons wouldn't understand that sometimes and sometimes I actually needed help though. I'm happy Because I feel like when I was happy and showing up happy and pleasant and saying wow I won this or I did this or I achieved this. Oh my gosh. I did this For me. I felt like that wasn't that 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 made me vulnerable to um, Rejection Not getting help as I needed to being seen as um, as as having more than I actually did and so it made me more vulnerable and so for me I felt like it was almost as though being happy or showing that I was happy was a negative thing like I had to show up like I'm dying and then you will have some mercy on me or life is hard for me and then you'll understand that even though I want something or even though I did good at something it didn't necessarily had a huge impact on my socioeconomic stat status so it doesn't mean I don't need help too and, and it also goes back to even when I look at because I have a charitable organization and and one of the things I really wanted to do, I did not want to serve people who are in the extremely low socioeconomic status my goal really was to work with uh, middle income people people who are working but are having really hard times but they are not really they're not really given the attention or or the the support that could really propel them further if they could just get that help and they're not getting it because they're not living on the street because they're not looking unhappy and they're not looking vexed and they're not looking and they're not wearing their problems on their sleeves mm -hmm. and so for me i found that for a long time i had to downplay things that were advancing in my life because the financial um, security that that the people outside thought it gave me it didn't give me it took me a long time to get to a place where I said okay I'm gonna be happy whether or not you make assumptions about me whether or not you show up to support me whether or not you know you 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 think that I need help or not how has that ever affected you have you ever seen it is it something that affects you at all do you ever find that impacting who you are, how you feel, your happiness, and your your um, your career as you, you you seek to soar and be happy doing so. Yes, um, that's, it's very it's so weird that you brought that up wow. because I experienced that. I have experienced that. I still experience that. And the fact is, he who feels it knows it. Yes. And um, I think for onlookers especially when you are, for me, being nationally recognized, they think that all your troubles are over. Ooh. <laughs> you know, she want to check and all these things, but they don't know your story and they don't know what happens behind the scenes, which is sad, but what are you going to do about it? Right. It took me a very long time because a lot of times I, I don't played who I was and that hurts my happy. Mm -hmm. especially for a child like me that was fed emotionally negative things never come for a second or third in my class never get always the last to be picked for something if picked at all and know that things are shifting you know persons are looking on um, looking on the makeup and the hair they're looking at the accessories and they're, they're seeing you manifest in a certain way not understanding that um, there's there's so many other elements and you are on a journey yourself. It's like oh, they are on a journey But then again, you have to look at also at the maturity of the persons and that's what I had to do and um, I realized that even my My circle is changing 
because when you begin to go around like-minded people who understand that the struggle is real, not just from a low or low income perspective, but being even in middle class, you're struggling, upper class people struggle. That exactly. This week I was just thinking about why um, the gentleman from Golden Cross in New York killed himself. He was successful. He had a lot of chains and all of those things. So everybody has their own struggle, but it's the maturity to process the information. And then there are those of us who decide that this may not have you know, but you're not gonna know. I mean, I walk up and look up to really and truly. That's just the situation that it is. And then you decide that, and depending on those, if there's so many factors because they can be surrounded by persons who are they might just be jealous of you. Let's be real. Can we be real? Yes. There might just be a certain level of jealousy that is existing, aside from the lack of maturity that is happening. And people feel like you have to tell all in order for them to really understand and accept you for where you are. Right. Which you're not going to do that with everybody. So you're just going to have to make up your mind to say, okay, if you understand you're really for me, you're going to understand that right now. If you ask me for something and I don't have it, I really don't have it. And you know me enough to know that if I did, I would. Right, right. Right? So... Yeah, and the higher monkey climb is the more I'm exposed. You will have a lot of people pulling at you. <laughs> yes. And at some point, you're going to have to, you know, withdraw. Jesus, Jesus had a lot of people pulling at him, and he just disappeared sometimes out of the crowd. So life is, life is funny. <laughs> so, okay, so life is very funny. Exactly. We just have to adjust as we go along. Right. Now that you're up, I did say a lot last question, but just to wrap up for me, I'm going to ask you, now that you're at, not asking, but I'm, now that you are where you are and you're living in your truth, based on what you said, you're living in your true calling, you're following your dreams, and you have found your happy, um, what would you, any message for um, anyone listening on this podcast right now or watching on YouTube? What would you say to them? I would say to anyone that's listening, with regards to finding your happy, First, you need to decide, you need to understand yourself. That's where I want to start. Know yourself. Know what you were created for. Because it is in your purpose you will find you're happy. I would also recommend for persons that you get a coach. Get a life coach that will help you to further um, flesh out. And Satin Brown is a very great coach. Get a life coach that will help you to put things into perspective and also to help you to find a path that is suitable for you. I would also say to you that when you find where you really want to go and what you really want to do, be reminded that you will have opposition, you will have dark days, but it doesn't mean that you are in the, in the, in a wrong place. Continue to pursue that path until you actualize to what you, you ultimately are brought on this earth for. You are valuable. You are special. And not even your fingerprint is like somebody else's. You would not have been brought here unless you did not have a divine assignment on your life. And it is only when the divine assignment comes into collision with you recognizing who you are and what you are here to do is when you will really and truly find you're happy. Wow. Thank you, Marsha J. So those, so these are my few words. Yeah. Thank you. Those were Welcome. powerful words. Mine, your mind. I'll never forget that. That was very powerful. It, our, um, I know you have an upcoming podcast. You want to close with telling us about that? Or you can tell us where we can get your music. Yes. Things like that. Oh. Yes. For those of you on SoundCloud, or if you're not on SoundCloud, you need to. It should be coming in, where in September. September, October, somewhere there. So I invite you. Hey, this is Marsha G. Marsha G. Praise is what I do. His is whose I am. Fashioned by grace. Express on paper. Positioned by purpose. Join me in worship weekdays at marshjministries.com slash podcast. Our to our devotional. Let's start the day right. 
wonderful. Could you tell us your website where people can get your music? Great. My website is www.marshajministries.com. And your music is there. And you can also find me. Yes, my music is there. Uh, you will also find my stores, my R2C store. You can also take a look around and you will see my royal events. If you have an event that you would like me to handle for you and there are different, uh, different levels and different um, choices in terms of an event. And it can be a big event, a small event, a corporate event, not so corporate. It could be a date night, a proposal that you want to do. It doesn't matter what it is. The team and I is able to handle it and to bring you the best service you have ever experienced in your entire life. Wow. So it's a great opportunity. You can win tickets on my site. Uh, there, there's some free music, and of course, I can be found on any social media platform. Currently, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm already on <laughs> YouTube, and I'm looking forward to doing so many more digital things awesome. in this time and season. Awesome. And is your music also on iTunes, Amazon, those those things as well? Yes, yes, it is. My music can be found on any digital platform, um, Spotify, Amazon, all of them, Napster, anything that you can think about, I am right there with you. <laughs> and also, I'm, I'm about to launch on internet radio, playing my music on internet radio. Isn't that so cool, guys? Real you cool. You know, so anywhere you are in the world. Real just, cool. Really yes. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. This is all good stuff. We're so happy to have you. I think you shared a lot of um, real gems or key knowledge. Mind your mind. I'll, I'll keep remembering that. That was a powerful thing. But your messages were really on point. And we thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And go empower. All right. Thank you. And thank you for having me so much. Satin Brownie. Our it was awesome. Pleasure. I hope to be back. Pleasure. Thank you, and the same to you. Take care, world. Bye-bye. pleasure speaking with Marsha J today phenomenal woman just phenomenal and I'm telling you her music is amazing so you've got to listen you've got to get her album you're gonna log on to her website which is www.marshajministries.com you've got to log on so as we're about to close the show let's let's just leave a couple of reminders with you remember now today we spoke about unearthing your potential and that's pretty much learning you understanding you connecting with you knowing being in sync with who you are innately right and allowing that to guide and drive the decisions you make rather than just doing something because the world says so lead with who you are lead with the knowledge of self lead with self-knowledge so here is how you can learn you spend quality time with yourself nothing is wrong with being alone as a matter of fact you should embrace quality alone time get to know who you are spend time with yourself second discover your purpose or your true calling and you may need to get the help of a career coach i'm one um, if you need help discovering because sometimes you may need the tools and techniques to help you really dive in to fully understand and exploit and on and, and connect with who you are and what your purpose is what your true calling is yes and number three is learn what heals you number three is so important so critical learn what heals you it's very important to understand that a lot of us sometimes don't even understand that when something upsets us that that, that there's a trigger that perhaps is there that causes some things to to upset us learn what those are for you so you can avoid being triggered learn what heals you so let's let me repeat spend quality time with yourself discover your purpose or your true calling and learn what heals you if you have any questions comments or feedback please leave it in the comment section to join me in a conversation on finding happy podcast contact me via my website which is www 
www.certifiedcoach.co www.certifiedcoach.co Thank you so much for joining us today and for listening and thank you for sharing, thank you for interacting. Bless you. Have a great week. Uh, we come back at you next week with a new guest, with new perspectives, new thoughts, new ideas. Have a wonderful time. Have fun. Learn you. Spend time with you on earth who you are because there in your treasures lie. Have a great day. I am Saturn Brownie. Thank you for tuning in.